I've been asked to speak because I've been interested in aging all my professional life. And a number of things have happened in the last six months, really, that give me great hope. Uh, aging is uh, relative. I remember very early on in my professional life, I said to someone, uh, someone's son, he'd been in the football match, he, I said, uh, big crowd? Yeah, a lot of old guys my end. I said, what do you mean by old? They said, oh, they must have been 28. <laughs> so it's relative. Also, the people I saw when I was working in Oxford in the 70s and 80s, the people who were breathless, incontinent, disabled, were breathless and incontinent and disabled not because they were 88, but because they'd been gassed in the First World War, or lived in poverty in the 20s and 30s, or smoked cigarettes all their life. There was nothing to do with aging, really. It was an environmental problem. Now, environment, of course, is physical and social, that um, I'm a little bit breathless, but I grew, grew up in Glasgow before the Clean Air Act of 1956. Uh, so it's not aging, it's the environment. The social environment, the physical environment. And in the last few months, we've seen a number of things happening. Firstly, NICE, the National Institute for Health and Social Care Excellence, has produced a guideline, and it says, and I never thought I would see this, that it's possible in midlife to prevent disability, dementia, and frailty. Not just prevent heart attack or reduce the risk of stroke, but these big problems that we all see to do with old people, the elderly, are we can reduce the risk dramatically. We've also seen in the last little while another thing about midlife. This is um, Chris Evans, called the midlife. Chris Evans is terribly cool now. I think he's the um, he's the uh, probably. The, um, the Jimmy Young of this age, you know, is, um, <laughs> uh, the, um, Tim Kelsey and I always had, and we, we, we may do it, when we set up NHS Choices, we thought what we need is um, to rehire Jimmy Young and have music and movement twice a day. Absolutely, right, I'll sign that lady up for the... Um, <laughs> But he's, uh, it's actually, it's a, I bought this, it's a very good book. The chapter on dying is terrific. Um, it's just a terrific, so maybe he's, he's 50. Then, of course, um, Jamie Oliver, my midriff crisis, 40. Of course, you'll have noticed the problem is men, really, isn't it? Really, um, with an exclamation mark. So we're seeing midlife recognized. We're seeing now that aging is something that starts in earnest really about 30. Um, Wiggins won the Tour de France at 32 and then set a world record at 35. I don't think he'll beat that world record at 36 because the maximum heart rate does go down 1%. But most of us, of course, start declining about the age of 20 when we get our first job because we embark on that very dangerous activity of sitting. Um, <laughs> This is, but this is what we mean by the environmental. The, the, the world we live in is sitting, commuting, and sitting at, at, at work for most of us. But what we've also seen has been people who appreciate that from 30 on, what happens to us, as I said earlier, it's social and environmental. If you reach 90 affected only by aging, you'll still be on your own. You may well be able to drive a car, and you may well be chairing a committee. It's other things. Now, I thought it just terrific when I first read about the centre. And they, they are thinking about people of all ages. And they're obviously concerned about very elderly people with frailty, who are very often affected by poverty. But the sense of mission I get from them is slightly different. And um, I'm just going to introduce someone who I think you all know, Jeff, who's probably the single most important person in pulling this off. And I just see a sense of hope for aging better. Yeah, we, but we're going to exploit her in the next few years. I'm just talking about getting started and getting to recruit Anna. Um, Jeff has played a key role in getting this up and running. So Jeff, over to you.